The Caribbean is a beautiful place, a series of tropical islands set on a sky blue sea, bordered by the US, Central America, and South America. Yet the islands in this sea, from Cuba to Hispaniola, Puerto Rico to Trinidad, have a disturbing history intrinsically linked to the horrors of slavery, genocide, and near perpetual violence since the arrival of the Spanish in 1492. The heinous crimes of European settlers still echo on the islands today. Slavery began on day one in the New World, the day Columbus set foot in the New World, incidentally, the day the concept of the New World began, is the day slavery started. One of Columbus' first orders of business was demanding the capture of a half-dozen indigenous people. He decided the character of the natives, the Taino, made them amenable to slavery, and began plotting the ways in which he could use the these people to increase his personal wealth and that of Spain. The Spanish helped themselves to pretty much everything, according to diaries kept by Columbus and those in his cohort, many of the Spanish men with Columbus were so savage they weren't permitted to leave their ships without an approved chaperone. Favorite activities of these men included rape, murder, and theft. Columbus' objection to this behavior is ultimately a bit weird, since he permitted the sexual enslavement of local women and girls and built his entire modus operandi in the New World on slavery and murder. Materialism, an alien concept, when the Spanish first arrived in the New World, they were amazed at how freely the native Taino and Arawak peoples gave stuff away. They simply handed things over to the Spanish, sometimes in exchange for worthless trinkets, other times with no strings attached. To think there was a time when the rampant materialism of the Western world was an alien concept on these very shores. The consequences of the Haiti Revolution, the Haiti Revolution was the first successful slave revolt of the New World. Self-emancipated African slaves created their own country, but had to destroy much of what was once the America's most profitable colony, they destroyed plantations, depleted the educated workforce, and burned much of the land. Wary of a country led by freed slaves, powerful nations at the time gave little, if no, aid to Haiti, which made it virtually impossible for the country to recuperate from the revolt. It is now the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The United States refused to acknowledge Haiti's statehood until 1862, 71 years after the revolt. What's more, Thomas Jefferson, wary France would try to reclaim Louisiana after losing Haiti, made the Louisiana Purchase, thus vastly expanding slavery in the United States. Slavery didn't end when slavery ended, with the abolition of slavery came indentured servitude, a system whereby people sold themselves into debt bondage to a plantation owner or other wealthy employer. A huge number of indentured servants came from India, as many as 1.5 million. According to an account from 1883, this system wasn't really that different from slavery. If any coolie fails to work for a single day of the week, he is sent to jail for two or four days, where he is forced to work while day and night kept under chains. We are tortured very much. For this reason two to three persons died by swallowing opium and drowning themselves. Economics created the contemporary Caribbean, the Caribbean today boasts rich and diverse culture, and a mixture of ethnic groups, including Afro-Caribbeans, Indo-Caribbeans, and more. The culture and ethnic makeup of the region is an accident of economics, in the 17th century, European plantation owners growing sugar needed labor, and slaves were the cheapest form of it, so they bought as many slaves as they could. With the abolition of slavery came immigrant workers, mostly indentured servants, from the Indian subcontinent, another very cheap form of labor. These cultures mixed with indigenous populations, who needed to assimilate because their own population was vastly depleted. To create the milieu of the Caribbean, the Spanish ignored all authority, it's easy to dismiss atrocities of the past on the assumption that everyone was ignorant and racist. In fact, Antonio de Montesinos, a Spanish priest, gave a sermon to the supposedly devout Catholic settlers of Hispaniola in 1511 denouncing the awful treatment of the indigenous population. Rather than listen to their priest, the settlers sent him back to Spain, where de Montesinos gave testimony to the king on what he saw in the New World. 
King Ferdinand was so horrified by this testimony he passed the law of Burgos to grant basic rights to the native people of Spanish territories in the New World. The conquistadors ignored this as needed for the sake of convenience. Thereby ignoring both their god and their king in the quest to plunder, rape, and enslave the New World. The fate of Otway, Otway was a Taino cacique, or leader, who organized guerrilla resistance against the Spanish first in Hispaniola then, after fleeing that island, Cuba. His resistance welcomed escaped African slaves, gladly adding them to their fighting force. Otway denounced the Spanish as gold worshippers who stole land and enslaved his people. Otway was eventually caught and sentenced to public execution by burning. When told to accept God or else forever burn in hell by Spanish priests moments before his death, he said he'd rather burn in hell. He was then burned to death. They are gone, according to Puerto Rican historian and anthropologist Ricardo Alegria, in the 1530s. Less than 50 years after Columbus arrived in the New World, a query came from Spain to a local governor, how many Indians are there? Who are the chiefs? The response? In Alegria's words, the answer was none. They are gone. By that time, it's estimated as many as 3 million Taino, or 85% of the population, died as a direct result of the arrival of the Spanish. The rise in female slave numbers, at first, traders sold male slaves almost exclusively, the thought process was they were better for the labor. But with slaves dying in droves, it was necessary to constantly replenish the slave force. Slave owners then struck upon the idea of bringing in female slaves and forcing them to reproduce to create the next generation of slaves. By 1801, the slave population of Barbados was 53% women, female slaves outnumbered men in St. Kitts, Nevis, and St. Vincent. The horrors of female slavery, female slaves in British Caribbean territories were subjected to worse conditions than their male counterparts. Pregnant slaves were forced to work well into their term, and were whipped, branded, and beaten without thought of their condition. Female slaves were also raped by their masters or forced to perform sexual favors for guests of friends of the master of the house. When British men had children by slaves, that family stayed on the plantation and worked, while the white family was sent back to Britain. Bodies paraded through the streets, in response to resentment and unrest from the indigenous population of what is now the Dominican Republic, Christopher Columbus, governor and viceroy of the Indies, ordered the killing of numerous native people. To further instill fear and servitude in the indigenous population, Columbus had the bodies of the dead cut into pieces, which were paraded through the streets for all to see, Afro versus Latin Caribbean, the ethnic makeup of Caribbean islands comes down to timing. Those islands first conquered by the Spanish, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, etc., are inhabited by Latinos, descendants of Spanish, native, and slave bloodlines. Many Spanish settlers took indigenous wives, and their children, who occasionally mixed with slaves, became New World Latinos. With British-controlled islands like Jamaica and Trinidad, by the time the British began shipping in huge numbers of slaves, the natives were gone, resulting in predominantly Afro-Caribbean populations of the descendants of freed slaves. Haiti, on the same island as the Dominican Republic, is Afro-Caribbean because the French took control and filled the country with African slaves. Puerto Rico was independent for about a year, it's hard to believe Puerto Rico was still a Spanish territory in 1897. In that year, Puerto Rican politician and activist Luis Munoz Rivera convinced Spain to grant the island autonomy. A year later, the Spanish lost the Spanish-American War, and gave Puerto Rico to the United States as a condition of its defeat. So ended Puerto Rican autonomy. Interquitera, Interquitera was a decree, a papal bull, in official parlance, issued by Pope Alexander VI in 1493 outlining which territories in the Americas would go to Spain and which to Portugal. The bull primarily affected South America, not the Caribbean, although the bull was accompanied by a papal mandate to convert the indigenous population to Christianity. The crimes of Christopher Columbus and his brothers, Christopher Columbus and his brothers behaved so badly on their third trip to the New World that fellow Spaniard Francisco de Bobadilla, who outranked Columbus, 
had them arrested and sent back to Spain in shackles. Among their crimes were cutting off the ears and nose of a man caught stealing corn and auctioning him as a slave. In another instance, a woman suggested Columbus was of low birth. One of his brothers paraded the woman through town naked, on the back of a mule, then cut her tongue out. After some time spent back in Spain, Columbus was eventually allowed to return to the New World, the bizarre case of Henry Morgan, Henry Morgan. Buccaneer of the High Seas, better known to many as Captain Morgan of rum fame, is a man with an extremely bizarre, and in some cases, creepy history in the Caribbean. The first part of his career consisted of wanton acts of violence and depravity, during brutal raids over which he presided his force was known to use women and children as human shields. Yet Morgan was never actually a pirate, but a privateer, raiding Spanish settlements at the behest of the British crown. After years of plundering he settled down, becoming governor of Jamaica, where he presided over anti-piracy legislation and persecuted pirates to the full extent of the law, the Spanish weren't the first violent invaders of the Caribbean. The Carib Indians, after whom the Caribbean Sea is named, originated in South America. A warlike people, they began invading Caribbean islands inhabited by Arawak people as the Spanish arrived in the New World. The name Carib comes from the Arawak word for cannibal, and these fierce, combative people slaughtered, conquered, and, according to myth, even ate the Arawak. Their progress was halted by the Spanish arrival, though the Carib remained on islands such as Dominica and St. Lucia, on the latter of which they obliterated an attempted British colony in 1638. The Arena Massacre The Arena Massacre took place in Trinidad in 1699. Catholic priests, dissatisfied with what they saw as the slow progress of the native slaves building their church, threatened to give a bad report of their behavior to the governor. Such a report might mean torture or death for the indigenous people, so they murdered the priests, lay in wait for the governor's detail, and killed all but one of these people, including the governor. Subsequently, 84 of the people involved in the massacre were hunted down and executed. The 22 individuals accused of being the ringleaders of the rebellion were hanged, decapitated, dismembered, and their body parts were strewn along the roadside as a warning. Barbados String of Disasters In the first half of the 17th century, Barbados led the Caribbean in sugar production, the island was a money-making machine. An outlandish string of disasters struck the island in the 1660s, and it never quite recovered. The bad luck began with a plague of locusts, yes, a plague of locusts, in 1663, and was followed by the Bridgetown Fire and a devastating hurricane in 1667. Drought ruined crops in 1668, and was followed by excessive rains, which destroyed plantations throughout the island in 1669. The history of the Caribbean holds many painful stories. It's marked by terrible things like colonization, slavery, and exploitation. Many indigenous people were harmed or wiped out when Europeans arrived. Enslaved Africans endured unimaginable suffering, forced to work on plantations. Even after slavery ended, the region faced challenges like poverty and political unrest. Learning about these difficult events helps us understand the struggles that shaped the Caribbean and the resilience of its people.